For decades, Memphis has been losing the fight against blight. Ideas come and go, but nothing really takes hold. Drug addiction is a lingering problem across Memphis. And from January to March, there have been 380 opioid-related emergency department visits and 538 suspected drug overdoses. Deaths from opioid and other drug addictions have gone up since 2020, and local organizations, along with the Shelby County Drug Court, are working to get people more treatment. Police Department's Heroin Overdose Response Team has investigated over 120 non fatal opioid-related overdoses and about 23 possible deaths, many of them due to fentanyl. I took the picture 10 years ago and I called it the door to hell because it was very much hell out here. Ben Owen. No hope. No struggle. It was a dark, dark place. All too well. I used to buy dope out of this house uh, almost 10 years ago. Kicked out of that halfway house, kicked off of drug court, eventually bottomed out uh, homeless in South Memphis. But where Ben hit rock bottom is exactly where he's rising to the top. He's a veteran. I figure if I can run 70 safe houses in Afghanistan, we could probably run some sober living houses here in America. And so I'm coming right back to the streets that broke me and we're gonna try to help other broken people. Everybody in South Memphis saw Jess and I when we were out there, very bad addicted. And so for them to see us like we are now, that carries a message and it's not a not a weak one. Operation Buy Back the Block, where founders Ben and Jessica Owen buy abandoned homes, fix them up, and let veterans in recovery live for free. There are so many similarities between what I did in Special Forces and what I see in Jess. We fight monsters, Flanders fields, doing here in the Buy Back the Block program. I mean, for starters, one of the programs that I worked real closely with in the latter part of my career was a program called Village Stability Operations. Imagine 10 years into the Afghan war, you decide to flip the whole script about walking down the enemy and, and dressing like RoboCop and putting scalps on the barn, and you go to kind of a modern day Magnificent Seven. And that means you're not only fighting alongside these cats, you are farming alongside these cats. You are helping them sort through dispute resolution issues, trafficking. I mean, you name all of the kind of sources of instability that, that take a community apart from the inside out. These Green Berets are living in that community, helping these locals kind of figure that out. And that is exactly what Ben and Jess are doing here in Memphis. I want to close as many trap houses as I can, rehabilitate the properties into a safe and sober living for single mom vets, other vets that have been through what I've been through, uh, trafficking survivors, any number of people you can imagine who have really been through some shit and have a desire to carry that mission forward. I am the people that this organization is going to help. I was once hopeless in a similar situation to this right here. And what was once the door to hell is now becoming a door of hope. And it was given to me and I have to give it back. And I prayed to God, if you just give me a chance to get back on my feet, I'll help other me. And I've been doing it ever since. You want help? I'm the guy to help. Why? Because somebody did it for me. It's a lot of people out here like me, you know? And, you know, I come from a, you know, really, man, a, a, a ugly background, really, you know? And, you know, I had went in, went through a lot, you know, coming up, man. You know what I'm saying? It was like a, a great big help to me. And I just want to return something to everybody else, you know? I lost everything, man, you know, even my daughter, you know. Uh, it was like, you know, the bottom, bottom of the pit to me because I was out here drugging and drinking and everything except the right thing, you know what I mean? Sometimes the things that I wanted to do, I couldn't do it because, you know, you know, I'm so caught up in that well. That's the whole mission here, is to help those in need of help. And not everybody that's in need of help knows they're in need of help until they get that help. Like if we can bring it out in the open and tell people it's okay that you're an addict, it's okay you're an alcoholic, come get help, we're here. Somebody is here to help you. As long as I can get that message out, I feel that we can do a lot better for the community. You gotta be able to stick into your word and learning your schedule about the things that you need to do and learning a different way and just being acceptable to other people's guidance. If you build their self-esteem and give them purpose, believe in them, you have no idea how you can turn somebody's life around. I'll tell people, my clients all the time, you guys are smart and more talented than you think you are. If they could just have somebody believe in them, man, and give them purpose, They'll go up, they'll move up. They won't go back down because they got, a, they got purpose now. Somebody gave me a hand up and taught me a new way to live. 
We can't do this by ourselves. Uh, yeah, we got willing bodies, willing souls, but unfortunately, it cost. When you do this, you go one home at a time, one person at a time, one connection at a time. Your opinion does not change this world. Your actions do, because you might be the person to make the biggest change. And the ripple effect that it's gonna have from that is gonna go so far and wide, and you may not even know it either. I think everybody kind of assumes we're huge and have all this funding. We don't. That's our biggest challenge now is funding. We're running out of money quickly, so the biggest challenge we've got is, is getting our fundraising footprint to align with our brand awareness footprint, and there's definitely a delta there. And so trying to close that up has is, is been a challenge. It's validating, and it, it just, and humbling at the same time. It's it's incredible to see people come out to help. Oh, and not only is it helping me and allowing me to continue my walk and grow in my recovery, but it's a chance to be able to see what kind of difference we can make. You know, I think what happened with Afghanistan, with the way that collapse happened, and the way you saw these groups like Flanders and Pineapple, Moral Compass and Sacred Promise, where the hell did they come from? Like they came from veterans who looked around and said, nobody's coming, we'll do what needs to happen when the institution fails. I think that was the first shot across the bow of something much bigger. And I think if you come to Memphis and you see what, what Ben and Jess are doing here, it is it unequivocal proof that that's happening. You get helped by the right people, it's a life-changing event, it really is.